whether we sell conveyors, whether we build conveyors, make conveyors, use or work on conveyors, they have problems. And what I want to hopefully discover today is some of the five biggest problems that users face when they're not or things are missed during design, build, upgrades, or those early stages of conveyors. So let's get into it. Inadequate belt cleaning. So if you're not familiar with Martin Engineering, if this is the first time you've ever joined one of our webinars and you're not really knowing what Martin Engineering does, well, we do a lot of things, but one of the most significant things that we're known for is our belt scrapers. So you know I cannot leave this off. Carry back at a facility is incredibly detrimental. And it's amazing how, even in 2023, how many facilities we visit who have inadequate belt cleaning. So we want to make sure that we're able to scrape that carry back off those belts significantly because inadequate belt cleaning is going to lead to belt mistracking problems. Material builds up on the rollers then those rolling components get out around, the belt starts to wander. Carry back leads to lost material, leads to excess dust and spillage, increased cleanup costs, premature equipment failure, citations. And then the biggest concern that we got to do, and guys, if you've joined us before, if you've seen any of the webinars I've done on conveyor safety, if you've seen any of our live classes, if you've read any of our books, you know the most significant hazard to workers around conveyors are the guys cleaning and shoveling materials, cleaning and shoveling up spilled material or carry back. So we've got to make sure we get that under control. All right, let's talk about some belt cleaning kind of minimum standards, minimum expectations here. These are what I consider the absolute minimums. This is, if you're running a conveyor, if you're designing a conveyor, building a conveyor, working on a conveyor, if you don't have this, you're way behind. You should be doing more than this. This is like low, low level stuff here that needs to be done. You got to have a primary and you got to have a secondary. It's amazing the facilities that I go to that are still only using a primary cleaner. If you're only using a primary cleaner, you're probably only going to get 40 to 50% of the carry back eliminated. Okay, another belt cleaning absolute minimum that I need to share with you. Number two, they've got to be professionally specified. If you're building conveyors and selling conveyors, you tend to buy the cheapest belt cleaner that you could put on that conveyor belt and then out it goes. Okay, that's not a professionally specified belt cleaner. There's a lot that goes into making sure you've got the right belt cleaner for the application. There's different duties of belt cleaners. There's different types of tensioners. There's different types of blades. There's different shapes to blades. There's tons of different urethane compositions that will change depending on the material. And all that has an impact on how well those primary cleaners and secondary cleaners are going to perform. All right, number three, metal tipped secondaries. Primary belt cleaners can be urethane. That's fine. Secondary cleaners, they've got to be tungsten carbide or stainless steel, some sort of metal. There's lots of urethane secondary belt cleaners out there. They're not going to get the job done. If you're concerned about a metal secondary with your splice, let me know. And I'll talk you through how that can work. Finally, I need to share this with you. There's new technology out there that some of you may not be aware of. We've introduced this new belt cleaner maybe a couple of years ago now. It's called the Clean Scrape. And traditional belt cleaners are going to use that urethane primary cleaner. This Clean Scrape is a tungsten carbide primary cleaner. And it performs fantastic compared to urethane, and it lasts a much longer period of time, so there's less maintenance and blade changes compared to a urethane belt cleaner. Now, this is a premier belt cleaner. This is only for the facilities that want the highest level of clean belts out there. If, uh, if this is just a facility that, hey, they don't have a problem, 
with a shovel and material up. They're fine with that. This is not uh, the, the cleaner for you. But if your challenge, if you're getting, if you're not getting the results with traditional belt cleaner, I would urge you to take a quick look at this. So I'm going to try to see if I can run a video here. I don't think this is going to run for me, gang. Uh, but what you can see here is this belt cleaner installs radically different than a traditional belt cleaner. And you can see here just the edges of that tungsten carbide tipped. Now, I purposely chose this photo because this works, this belt cleaner works very, very well with mechanical splices, um, which seems like it shouldn't, but it certainly does. I get this question all the time. What about specialty cleaners, brushes, beater bars, things like that? Well, they'll clean the belt. Um, they're not, the, you know, the traditional belt cleaner method is primary cleaner out of urethane, secondary cleaner out of tungsten carbide. That's what's going to get you to 90%. A lot of facilities are using these, and that's fine. We tend to believe uh, that they're not as effective as that model that I just described. However, your applications might be a little bit different and your expectations of a clean belt might be a little bit different. And therefore something like these uh, may be appropriate just depending on the condition of your belt, the material, all those types of things.